sins, his mercy endured forever. Beginning of this season of Lent, we will recite together the Decalogue or the Ten Commandments. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us upon our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor thy father and thy mother. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. We stand. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your prayers. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice.
After the waters had receded, God promises to never again destroy the earth by flood. The rainbow is an outward, invisible sign of God's covenantal promise. A reading from the ninth chapter of the book of Genesis, beginning at the eighth verse. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring the clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is a sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Peter used a comparison between the flood and the waters of baptism to show that more is going on than meets the eye in both events. Miss neither God's patience before the flood nor God's gift of an inward and spiritual grace in baptism. A reading from the third chapter of St. Peter's first letter beginning at the 18th verse. 
Christ also suffered for sins once and for all, the righteous and for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation. And to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which is prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of the dirt from your body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. reading from the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark, beginning at the ninth verse. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Father, I pray that your spirit might minister to us as we move through this time in the wilderness, that your good news might be a comfort to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. See you. Last Wednesday evening in our Ask Wednesday service, we began the observance of a Holy Lent with our Ash Wednesday liturgy. And I spoke that evening about our need to be in quiet solitude with God, that God might come and reward us in that quietness with knowledge of God's love for us. This morning on the first Sunday in the season of Lent, we begin with Mark the journey through the story that is Jesus's ministry amongst us. Jesus is going out from Galilee down to the River Jordan to meet his cousin John the Baptist at the river and approve of the ministry of John and his baptism for repentance. But in this gospel version, in Mark's gospel version, we don't have that give and take between Jesus and John. We simply have the raw data. Jesus received the baptism of John. And during that moment, as he came up out of the water, the heavens were torn apart. The Spirit of God descended upon Jesus like a dove. And the words, at least by Jesus, were heard, This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to him. Immediately, one of Mark's favorite words, and certainly characteristics of characteristics, of Mark's gospel is the immediacy, the movement, the speed with which Jesus goes from moment to moment, perhaps even from miracle to miracle to teaching to teaching, just rapidly, immediately, the Spirit drove Jesus out into the wilderness. And Jesus remained in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. Tempted by Satan, subject to the wild beasts, and all the while ministered to, waited upon by the angels. Sometimes in our normal, everyday life, we feel that immediacy, that hecticness, that speed of life, the rapidity of information, events, circumstances. And it can feel like a wilderness, like we need to be ministered unto by God's angels. And so it is our opportunity in this season of Lent to slow down, to take a break, to step back, to put aside the hectic pace of the world in which we live, the world in which we are tempted by Satan, the world in which there are wild beasts, wild fortunes, adverse circumstances all around us. And yet, there are also the ministering angels. We can feel their presence. We can count on their ministrations within us. And from that experience in the wilderness, Jesus was convinced, if he had not been intellectually convinced prior, but viscerally, physically, in his gut, in his very soul, convinced that he was indeed, and always will be, the beloved of God. And that we, in our day, need to take the time to listen to Jesus, 
And we might ask in that time, what is it that Jesus is telling us? What is Jesus asking us to do? The practical question, to be the ontological question, the essential question. And I would say to you that as Jesus proclaimed after his experience in the wilderness the good news of God, that God is with us, that God doesn't just shove us out into the wilderness and say, good luck, hope the beasts don't get you. But God is there with us, that Jesus is in the wilderness with us along with Satan, along with the wild beasts, but also with God's angels. And so, if there's anyone that thinks that this Christian endeavor, this journey of the way, of walking in the world with Jesus, is Pollyanna, is pie in the sky, is fantasy, is unrealistic, we need only that single verse from this morning's gospel. Jesus was, we are, tempted by Jesus. Jesus was in the wilderness with the wild beasts. We are in this world with our wild beasts. Jesus was ministered to, waited upon by the angels of God. And we as well are waited upon by the angels of God. It is unto our wounds and to our sorrows, to our heartaches, to our disappointments that God ministers. And that it is in the midst of our acknowledgement, our incorporation, our enfleshment of our own painful experiences, of our own dark days of our sadnesses. That our hearts are ministered to by God's angels, that we are made more compassionate. That we are able to respond to the needs of others because we have experienced God's healing in our own lives. The wilderness times are fully present to us. They are as real as God's presence and healing in the midst of them. So we can be heralds of God's good news. Not silly, happy-go-lucky, but we can say, I know what it means Hurt. I know what it means to be one down, if not a hundred or a thousand down. But I also know the joy of Jesus' presence. It is God's news that ministers to us. It is God's news shared with others that ministers to the world. We bring what has been given to us. We share what we have experienced. It is our own real encounter with Jesus that we can share with others with the confidence of knowing that God's love in our hearts is truly healing and that God's love in the world is also the balm that heals all.
was crucified, died, and then was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sustain us with your Holy Spirit. 
Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted of Satan, make speed to help thy servants who are assaulted by manifold temptations. And as thou knowest their several infirmities, let each one find thee mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the King eternal, who dividest the day from the night and turnest the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep thy law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done thy will with cheerfulness while it was day, we may, when night cometh, rejoice to give thee thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of thy faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before thee for all members of thy holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and godly serve thee, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The prayers of the people form two are found in the bulletin and also in the Red Book of Common Prayer. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Susan, for this gathering, and for all ministers and peoples. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all those who seek God for a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially Betty Jordan. Pray for those who have died. Please lift up the following in your prayers. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, pray for the church for the province of Central Africa. Those in our parish who are sick or recovering, especially Don, Nancy, Pam, Pat, Bob and Lou, Sonia and Bruce. Our friends, neighbors, and extended family who are ill or have special needs, particularly Sylvia, Carly, Jenny, Justin, Connie, John, Michelle, Joan, Mike, Judy, Ann, Keith, Bill, Darlene, George, Bob, Ed, Betty, Jackie, Barbara, Barbara, Linda, Bo, Chris, George, Nancy, and Thomas. Those who have died, especially Barbara, Malloy, and the mother of Laura Malloy. Those with special needs, particularly the homeless and the hungry, and all victims of terrorism and their families, and those serving in and supporting the armed forces, especially Caitlin, Robert, Timothy, Matt, Shane, and Nicholas.
praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through jesus christ our lord to whom with you and the holy spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages Amen. Almighty God, who have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. This coming Wednesday evening, February 24th at 7 p.m. we will begin our Lenten book study with uh, a close reading, we'll say, of Richard Rohr's The Universal Christ. Richard Rohr is a Franciscan monk, brother, we'll say, I guess, who is very, very adept at uh, explaining, talking about, working with um, sophisticated theological concepts, and so his writing style is, is very um, available and, and not simplistic, but, but clear and uh, provocative, we might even say. He's, he's just a wonderful, wonderful person. And we hope that we can figure out the technology to get some of his um, taped um, discussions of his book, as five minutes, 10 minutes to add into our own discussion. And hopefully that'll help us uh, you know, understand more and share more readily with one another. So that will begin this coming Wednesday at, at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, we will continue uh, for the foreseeable future, which we hope is short, not to sound grim or something, but we hope that we'll continue with our live streaming of our Lenten Sunday morning services. Uh, but I wanted to just highlight the fact that we will gather least in the churchyard, if not inside the building, on Easter morning, April 4th at 10.30 for a celebration of the Eucharist together. And we all certainly have that to look forward to. Uh, at the end of the month of April, at the end, in the midst of the Easter season, uh, we're having a, a first rummage sale to uh, raise some funds for uh, the ministries of, of St. Paul's. And the, the way that connects for me in terms of Lent is that if you're like some that try to do spring cleaning in Lent, you may come across things that may no longer have value to you, uh, but could very well be of use and value to others. Uh, those things may be brought to the church and they'll be stored downstairs in Bristol Hall and then displayed on April 30 and, and May 1st and hopefully raise some money. 
Ascribe unto the Lord the honor do his name. Bring offerings and come into his court. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love. So mightily spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory now and forever. Amen. Ever-living God, whose will it is that all should come to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, inspire our witness to him that all may know the power of his forgiveness and the hope of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, who sittest in the throne judging right, we humbly beseech thee to bless the courts of justice and the magistrates in all this land, and give unto them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, that they may discern the truth and impartially administer the law in the fear of thee alone, through him who shall come to be our judge, thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Grant, most merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with a quiet mind, through Christ our Lord. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. 
Amen. Thanks be to God.